Alright, Shalom, Aras Tafari, Shabbat Shalom, Sendet Salam. This guy and I just getting prepared for the for the Sabbath here. Um and we're going from the online resources right now. Um, from the on and offline resources. This is the Sabbath House reading. Yeah. Sa me ne ta we yes amen ta we yes amen ta we yes amen ta we se ne be te send back send back be able to get a good clear shot of that right there okay this makes it a little bit clear okay yes amen ta we Send it o ri te o rit ne ba be ne ba. Now you can download this. Um, it's the PDF, and you can you can print it out. And we we'll suggest that you do print it out. Now, this uh, sabbatical reading and feeding. This is just to to help those who might not know how to utilize um, some of the online resources that, that are here that are available um, for us. So this is the PDF you can find at the www. Um, LOJ Society dot, um, dot org. All right. Um, and uh, let's go to, so we're here in the 40... Uh, let's see where we when uh, let's move this further down here. Let's go to page uh, We're on page cuz Devarim was 44 44 right here and so Let's enlarge in this Right here. Let's see if we can move this over All right Okay, here we're at uh, 45 so we're at the 45th. Bamarinya in the Royal Amharic, in the midst of Caduceus of Negus and Nagas, if you can see this, might be a little bit small here. So, what we're going to do is let's uh, zoom this to more full screen size so you can see this um, large enough so we can read the Fidel, each Fidel, Fidel, Beth Fidel. So, you can see it right here at 45. So, we have La, ma, ne, hu, lemenhu, 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 lemenhu. See the e, the schwa, e. La, ma, ne, hu, lemenhu, lemenhu, lemenhu. And the Hebrew is um va et chanan, va et chanan. In the biblical Hebrew, where et Hanan, and the reading contains Deuteronomy is Deuteronomy chapter three verse twenty-three to Deuteronomy chapter seven eleven, and this is in the Torah. The first reading is the Torah portion. Then we go to the Haftarah or the Nabiyat, the prophetical or the prophet. Um, and this is Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26. Then, unlike um, the Jews uh, who do not accept Yeshua, Yehoshua as Moshiach, therefore they don't read the, they're not in the New Covenant, so they don't read this, but we do, as Ethiopian Hebrews, as Beta Israel, and this is the Berit Hadasha, or the Hadis, Hadis Kidan, the word Hadis and the word Hadash, Hadasha, Hadasa, one and the same being new, like Adis, Adis Ababa, Adis, new flower. So this is a new covenant. Matthew, we have two readings. It's Matthew chapter 23, verses 31 to verse 39, and Mark, Marcos, Wengel, Chapter 12, verses 28 
32, verse 34. Now, in fellowship, like in, in, in Mikorab, the early form of the, the Beta Christian, where the Beta Christian or the church comes out of or gets its form, its structure, its foundation from the so-called Jewish synagogue or what we call Bamarinya, the Mikorab, there would be individuals assigned to come up to read the Torah scroll or the Orit scroll. And this is called Aliyah or the Aliyah. Now those who are called up to read would read a portion a portion of the reading. So this is how the whole family and the whole congregation who are who are able to you know and so this is kind of a goal also for our study and also for the Bar Mitzvah, the Bat Mitzvah, the world to his eyes, the letter to his eyes. You know, so the same structure is I and I structure as well, but we have to grow up to him in all things. So what we wanted to do is just show you some of the online resources before we get into a a more in depth perhaps teaching or a, a, a prophecy or a revelation. As Huari Apollos he says some very um interesting things concerning uh the tabernacle, concerning concerning the um concerning uh how the gathering was gathered, and I don't know if we have enough uh, opportunity right here. The machine is a little slow right here. We want to use this as a basic if we go to the Blue Letter Bible. For those who might lack some of the other study materials, you know, the hard copies, some of the books and other things, you can use some of these online resources. Avail yourself of some of these online, okay, here we go to the Blue Letter Bible, right? Here, here we go to the Blue Letter Bible. Something that Hawaii Apollo said that when we understand it in its proper context, we begin to recognize, wow, that's, that's, that's like the sabbatical structure. That's what Paul was teaching in, uh, in the different synagogues on the Sabbath day. You understand on the Shabbat, sometimes straight into the, the new day or the next day or the first day of the week, which we know as um uh, Ehud and which is called Sunday. So let's let's get um Psalms where he says how when you're coming together each one has a psalm, each one has a revelation. You you know, is that when we come together each one wanna share something, but he says like let all things be done in order. In fact, yes, yeah, spell Psalm correctly there is a psalm but the Put the M there, not the N, and then let's try this search again. And yeah, so it's First Corinthians. We have First uh, Corinthos, I watch right here. First Corinthians, chapter fourteen, verse twenty-six. He says, "How?" Now we have the 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 um, key word, search words here. That's why it's spaced like that. So if you want to search this, you know, and go into what each word is and this is New Testament, so Septuagint on the Greek, it says, How is it then, brethren, when the much, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, which is like a teaching or a teaching on the teaching, hath a tongue or a language. Uh, look at this in the Hebrew. Look at this in, in, in the Greek. Look at this in the Aramaic. Look at this in the Seretic. Look at this in the Ethiopic. Look at this in the, uh, the Metuneta. Look at this in the Coptic. You know what I'm saying? Has a revelation, something that Yah has revealed to them in particular concerning this portion or concerning this particular reading or this area of Scripture or some area of Bible that has been laid on their heart. It says, has an interpretation. One may have an interpretation of a certain area. Well, yes, Ross, yeah, Dinos, you interpret it like that. But I notice this word right here, so forth and so on. So when we come together, this is speaking about the Mikorab, but most take it as, as the church, but the church was founded on its Judaic. The true church of Yeshua is on a, uh, a Judaic foundation. As he says, you worship what you know not. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews or of Yehuda. Moa and Bessa, Zaim, Negeta, Yehuda. So he says, let 
all things be done to edifying. Remember that word edifying? We touched on it in a, in a recent posting on Rastafari Tawaido. Now it has the 3619 here. Let's just click on this for a moment. We're going to have a couple more minutes in this particular clip, so um, just uh, pay attention to this right here, and hopefully we'll have opportunity to go forward. Your prayers and support will help us in our mission to get Jah's word to the world. All right, so please support as as one is willing, hard to to do so. No stress, no duress. Now the word here is oiko dome, oiko dome, okodoma, okodoma, okodome, in the Greek, right? Septuagint. So it, it, as a root word, etymology is a female or feminine. It's a feminine form a word is the abstract of a compound of I think it, this is oikos here in the Greek the G thirty six twenty four and the base of um um I think this is uh Oma 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 right right here and this is uh the G fourteen thirty. But the word that we're interested in is edifying. What is edifying says let everything that we do, whether it's a psalm, an interpretation, a doctrine, a teaching, this or that, a tongue, a language. It says, let all be done for and towards edifying. So what is edifying? And we taught on this earlier, previous, is what, is what's that word right there? Building up. Building. It's the act of building. Let us build. You know, it's like, you know, let us build. You're familiar with how we have said that and how we have used that and you know, um, whether it's um, the poor righteous teachers, let, let us build, you know, building, right? We could break something down, but breaking down is one thing and building up is another thing. Let us not just be breaking down the so-called truth. We have to build up, right? Build up on the truth. So building up, metaphysically, this is a met or metaphorically, the M-E-T-A-P-H or the metaph is edifying, Edification, that's what you're getting in your Bible, you're getting a metaphor. But actually, directly, it's the act of building or building up. Then under metaphor, the metaphorical edifying edification is the act of one who promotes another's growth. It's the act of one who promotes another's, somebody else's growth. Not their own growth, but the growth of another in Christian wisdom, piety, happiness, holiness. For I and I in the new name as Rastafari, let's understand this. It's the act of one who promotes another brethren or sisterin's growth in Rastafari wisdom, in Rastafari piety, in Rastafari happiness, in Rastafari islandness or holiness. Thirdly, it's a building. It, it, it refers to the thing that is built or what they call an edifice and edifice. So we're pointing this particular area out. This is Thaler's lexicon, a very good New Testament Greek lexicon. Of course, we don't have the opportunity to go through this, but this, what, we, what we have here is a summary, the outline of biblical usage. But if you want to get into some of the more details of it, it gives you other, um, you know, it gives you other details, like right down here it says, use of a heavenly body, the abode of the soul after death, it says a body of Christians, a church, right, a church, so forth and so on, um, the owner or the occupant thereof, right? Now, there are other areas of the use of this word, and it tells you down here, this is when you, go, when you get into your study. But for the Shabbat, these are the ba this is the basic readings that we want to just focus on, and some of you already know about, say, the, some of the online wiki pages, the Blue Letter Bible. This is for those who might lack the resources but do have an opportunity to get onto the Internet. And you can download some of this, you know, like save it to a thumb drive or something like that, or even print it out. Not print out everything because you might not have money or the opportunity, but print out those main things concerning that particular portion. This is why this page right here, the Ve'eta, the Ve'eta Hanan, which means, and I plead it, like Lemenuhu, and I plead it, and I beseech, and I beg. It's the first word in the Parsha, and it's the 45th weekly Torah portion, right? Or Parsha, 
in the annual um, Judaic or Jewish, and for I and I as the black Jews, Beta Israel cycle of Orit Minbab or Torah reading, and it's the second for I and I in the book of Deuteronomy. Right? It constitutes, as we went over already, we'll go over again, Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 23 to 7, 11. Now, we as black Jews and other Jews, faithful Orthodox, the ones who seek to keep the way, whether they are natural born or whether they are converted, you understand? In the diaspora, generally read it in late July or August. It is always read on the special Shabbat, or the, or the special Sabbath, the Shabbat and the Hamu, the Sabbath immediately after the Tisha B'Av. Now, this parsha, this portion, it tells how Moses, Mashu Musa, asked to see the land of Israel. He puts forth arguments to obey the law, to obey Torah. He recounts the setting up of the cities of refuge. And this is a, a point for the brothers and sisters out there who are going through all sorts of uh, um, persecution for, for Jah will and for Jah word's sake. And for the rest of the community, we need to consider very seriously our own cities of refuge. We don't have sanctuary or mechdes. And the idea is on a monastical, monastery, and nunnery idea, sisterhood, places for our people to live and to focus on their spiritual and, and, and community, communal skills, in other words. You know what I'm saying? But in a monastical and, and, and a... Um, a, a nun, like the nunnery, you understand? Some sisters that don't want none of the other kind of stuff want to first ground themselves. The brothers who want to go mono and solo and be able to build their own foundation. We need to consider this, and we need the community to come together around this, um, around this effort, around this mission. So we're going to get into this, but this is good that this is in this Torah portion because it can help to remind us. Also, it recites the Ten Commandments, or the Decalogue, the Asher, the Kalat, the Ten Words, and the Shema, Shema Yisrael, Shema Yisrael, Hoi, Shema. And it gives instructions to the Israelites, Beta Israel, I and I, in the conquest of the land. So it also 